Greetings, everyone. I'm your host, Maria Cosette, and you are watching The Maria Cosette Show. This is where the left brain meets the right. I interview multifaceted professionals from diverse backgrounds, but instead of talking about their everyday careers, we discuss their artistic interests, creative outlets, or extraordinary hobbies. To find out more about the show, you can visit mariacosette.com slash television. And of course, for any inquiries, email us at info at mariacosette.com. I'm excited for today's show because I have a fantastic guest. Can't wait to talk to her. And of course, other little segments we call Know the Greats, where I spotlight a legend, and The Art of Giving, where I spotlight a charitable organization or a venture. Stay with us. Hi, everyone. We're back, and you are watching The Maria Cosette Show. Today, my guest is not only a powerful attorney, but a community activist and an advocate of cultural enrichment for the Armenian American communities. But today, we're going to be talking about her creative vision as a jewelry designer and entrepreneur. Welcome, Vanna. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me today. Of course. Thank yeah. you for being here. Absolutely. Um, so let's first give the audience a little bit of background about your career in law. Sure. Um, I'm in pra private practice in the San Fernando Valley with the Kitsinian Law Firm. Uh, the founding um, partner is my brother, Nadig, and we specialize in civil litigation. Um, I handle uh, business disputes and product liability actions, and um, my brother handles pharmaceutical litigation and PI. So um, it's a fun dynamic to work with family. So I've been doing that for since 2005, actually. So um, law has always been such a passion of mine, and that's you know primarily what I pursued at the outset. Nice, and yeah. you're a fellow Trojan, so fight on. Yes, absolutely. Yes. It's always good to know. Um, okay, so now that let's jump into the fun stuff. Um, so you have this very successful jewelry line. What first initiated your interest into designing jewelry? Um, well, I love beauty and beautiful things. And ever since I was a child, I always had this creative streak where I, I love to create and I love to bring things to life. And um, I actually grew up in the jewelry industry. I'm a third generation jewelry designer. Oh, okay. um, so it was a very organic growth for me. Right. I never pursued jewelry as any kind of a career. Um, I grew up the only daughter of a master jewelry designer, my father, Sarkis Kitsinian. And um, as a little girl, I would always sketch and kind of want to personalize my pieces and make That's custom awesome. pieces. Yes, and um, my father would always encourage me, but um, kind of mentor me and explain to me why certain designs and, and um, architectural formation of pieces are more feasible than others. Right. So he cultivated that love of sketching and that passion for design in me. And um, it just grew from a natural place. And I had just accumulated a lot of sketches and creative designs that my father put into production. Um, actually after I graduated law school while I was waiting for the bar exam right. and um, created a collection and named it after me. So that's kind of how it began. So I guess then waiting for the bar exam results <laughs> wasn't as tough for you as it is for I others. I guess not. Well, I mean, there were many, many years of, um, you know, sketches and ideas right. that, you know, that there were waiting uh, to kind of put into a collection. So I mean, I grew up in this industry, and right. I grew up with entrepreneurship. I grew up with the love of jewelry design, um, watching my mother, you know, uh, wear, you know, wearing her jewels and kind of beautifying everything around her in her life. And I kind of, um, I think I was very much influenced by that. So uh, again, I don't have any formal training in jewelry, but it does. It's like an apprenticeship that I have with right. my father that kind of. Uh, grew from a very natural place. Wonderful. Yeah. And so what is the whole um, conceptualization process, you know, from idea to completion to production? Sure. I know it entails a lot. Yes. Um, the conceptualization really originates from my interactions and my experiences, my personal travels. All of these things um, inspire me and right. kind of give me different ideas and uh, evoke different emotions in me. And so what I do is you know, whenever I'm sporadically inspired from all of these different factors, it, it really starts very primitively. It's pe pencil to paper, and mm -hmm. I just sketch kind of what I envision and what I want to see come to life. Right. Or pieces that um, 
I would like to wear that don't exist, for example. And then those sketches of mine kind of go through a more formal sketch process okay. and then eventually become a CAD graphic design. And then the molds are made, the wax molds, and then of course they're casted and a sample is made. And even through the sample process, I'm kind of notorious for <laughs> being a revisionist. I'm constantly trying to improve and, you know, make it the best that it could be. So, um, you know, a piece could, you know, take months to create. Um, and it has all of its stages, right. and, but it, it really starts out from a very personal place and something that speaks to me. It could be a pattern, it could be you know, a tree, it could be um, the skyline, you know, buildings, architecture, so many different things. That's so I think, interesting. Yeah, you know, when you're curious and you, you have a lot of wonder, mm -hmm. which I feel like I do. Never lose your sense yeah, of wonder. Yeah, it's, it's true, and um, that kind of sense of creativity, I think, is heightened. So... Um, that's kind of how the creative process works. And I love, you know, that you're so involved in the entire process. That's very important. And that's yes. probably why it attributes to being a successful entrepreneur, being involved from the moment you have that idea to production to the whole thing. Yes. Um, so what are the central themes as far as the colors, the settings, maybe even preferences you have in stones? Sure. Um, my collection, which is called Vanna Kay, uh, there are two collections. It's the Diamond and Fashion collection, which is found in authorized um, fine jewelry retailers, you know, throughout the world. And then there's, of course, the um, collection that I sell exclusively on jewelry television, which is a simulated collection. Okay. Um, but both collections um, are an Art Deco vintage inspired collection. I love them. They're yes. beautiful pieces. Oh, thank you so yeah. much. Um, which are very much inspired by the 1920s and the 30s when there was like an emphasis on geometry right. and symmetry of lines. Um, that really speaks to me. And um, I would say the collection is very feminine and sensual, but at the same time bold. Mm -hmm. um, which is why I think it makes a statement. Right. Um, and when it comes to colors, you know, I love vibrancy. I love colors. And so there are, there's a collection called Gelato, which celebrates bold, vibrant colors. Um, and then, of course, there's a classic collection, which is the traditional, you know, platinum and white diamonds or right. white simulated stones for the television collection. So um, I, t I like to take classics, Maria, and kind of bring them into the 21st century, kind of put my own spin on it and give it a right. modern touch. Um, so, uh, yeah, it, it's really, it, it encompasses everything from, it started as a bridal ring collection, mm -hmm. but now it, it encompasses every category of jewelry from earrings to bracelets to necklaces and, and even gentlemen's jewelry. So it's evolved quite a bit. It has. <laughs> I love it. Well, we have a lot to talk to you about. Please stay with us. You're watching the Maria Cosette show. 7Q Spa Laser and Aesthetic Center has opened its doors to their new location in Glenda, a luxurious space offering cutting-edge technologies, including laser hair removal for men and women, all injectables and fillers, Botox, Restylane, Kybella, Juvederm Ultra Plus, and all other variations, Pedio Thread Lift, PRP Facial with Mesotherapy and Microneedling. Visit their new location, 7Q Spa Laser and Aesthetic Center. We're back with the Maria Cosette Show, and my guest today is Vanna Kitsinian. How are you? Wonderful. Thank, Thank you, you again for being here. Um, so we're talking about your jewelry line and all the wonderful things that come along with it. And you're one of the very few professionals, actually, that I've spoken to that has a parallel career as a jewelry designer. And, and I say entrepreneur with an emphasis on that because you're successful in both practicing law and um, your creative side. Thank you. So, yeah, so you actively exercise the right and left brain. <laughs> That's right, I yeah. love that. Yeah, um, so let's talk about uh, one of the biggest successes, the television venture. How did that come about? Sure. Um, the television um, show, Vanna Kay for Bella Luce, is the collection that's exclusive to jewelry television, actually started when JTV approached me um, and asked if I would be willing to create a collection for their network. Okay. And, um, you know, I thought it was a I thought it was a good marriage between the two because uh, they have a simulated stone which is proprietary to jewelry television, which is really the highest quality of a diamond simulant. Okay. Um, which is kind of what people call CZ. 
CZ diamonds, um, but the highest quality, there are d different grades. And so with the unique design of Vanike, I wanted to offer women all walks, of all walks of life the opportunity to have fine jewelry, designer jewelry at affordable prices. That's fantastic. Kind of empower women and yeah. to make you know every woman feel beautiful um, with the highest quality of craftsmanship. Um, so uh, actually we launched the show in 2002 and I'm in my seventh year. I was their first uh, branded designer at Jewelry Television. Wow. Thank okay. you. I and, love it. Um, going strong now, um, almost in the eighth year and uh, the collection is vast. It, at any given time it has almost 400 items that are exclusive to jewelry television. Oh, goodness. And everything is sterling silver, platinum plated, or 18 karat rose yellow or white gold. Rose is my favorite. Uh, I know, rose is very feminine, <laughs> very blushing beauty. Yeah. Um, and so that's how it began, actually. They approached me, and I decided to design for them. And it's, it's been a wonderful partnership, so to speak, um, for many years now. And uh, it's based out of Tennessee. And so that's where the studio is. And I'm there about every two months. And I do a series of live television shows um, as a co-host uh, for the Vanna Kay show, um, showcasing my designs and sharing my passion and explaining you know, how every piece came to be and what inspired every piece. So um, one thing I think that's really unique is that because I'm a female designer, I get to, it kind of resonates with the main demographic of customers, which of right. course are female. Yeah. So uh, to make them feel beautiful and what makes them feel confident is something that I can relate to. And so that's kind of how I design what, what would make me feel beautiful. Right. And um, so, uh, yes, the collection Vanna Kay for Bella Luce is exclusively available through Jewelry Television, which happens to be the largest jewelry retailer in America and has almost 90 million viewers. Um, yeah, JTV is amazing. Yes. So that's that's how it all began. That's awesome. So if any of our audience members uh, want to get any of the pieces from that collection, they go to JTV.com because it's exclusive to them. However, if they'd like to get the diamond pieces, yes. you go to VanaKate.com. That's right. Yep. Um, so with that said, I know you're constantly traveling and you're a successful attorney, and then you also dabble and I say dabble very lightly because you do a lot of it as far as community service and all this stuff. What does your work-life balance look like? I don't know how you do it, but it's amazing. And by Thank the way, um, every time I see you, you have this very good energy to you, positive, always smiling, you know, even in very high stress situations. So how do you do it? You're so kind. Um, you know, it is a balancing act, I have to say. When I first started doing the television show, I was with a, uh, I was a litigation attorney with a large downtown law firm. Right. And I did that for almost two years while balancing doing the show in Tennessee. But as the show grew, it became quite a challenge to make up those billable hours while I was traveling. Um, but coincidentally, my brother at the same time branched off and opened his own law firm, the Kitsinian Law Firm, and it was perfect timing for me to join um, him yes. in private practice. And that way I can pick and choose the cases that I work on, the ones that I'm most passionate about, right. um, while also giving me flexibility to travel and pursue my passion of jewelry design. So um, really, you know, it's a good situation that I have. I'm very fortunate that I, I work with family in that sense that gives me that flexibility and that sense Absolutely. of understanding. I can't take um, all the credit for myself. Um, so I have a good support system and, uh, you know, I just take it, you know, as it comes day by day and just, you know, tackle it one at a time. Yeah. And I like, I like to keep busy and I like that kind of high energy, um, kind of lifestyle. I, I think I've become accustomed to it. So at this yeah. point it's a little bit just kind of You'd like second nature. You'd probably be bored otherwise. I think I would be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're ambitious. Um, and so I ask, um, the next two questions to all of my guests and it's, yeah. um, very interesting to hear your perspective on how your creative side has fed into, um, law or vice versa, you know, how, how has one helped the other or nurtured it in sure. one respect? 
Yeah, you know, I get that question a lot because people say, wow, those are two very different right. things, you know, practicing law and designing jewelry. And I think at first glance they are. Um, but in fact, uh, you know, as uh, structured and methodical as law could be, right. at the same time, it does require a certain level of creativity, I think, because, you know, you have to think outside the box. You have to formulate arguments that are creative. That's true. Come mm -hmm. up with solutions that are sometimes unconventional. Um, and you just kind of have to make things work. And that is kind of open to all kinds of opportunities and possibilities. And it's right. not as... Uh, simple or direct as one might think. Right. And it's a very detail-oriented profession. Law is, and so is jewelry design. Right. And I feel I'm pretty detail-oriented in all aspects of my life. It's just my nature. Right. Um, so in a way, they're intertwined, and I think those qualities kind of carry over that sense of creativity and kind of thinking outside the box and expanding your horizons and uh, broadening the way that you see things. Absolutely. Very yeah. well said. Um, and why do you think it's important to have a creative outlet or an artistic talent and using it as a creative outlet? Why do you think that's yeah. important? Well, I couldn't imagine not having it because um, creativity just makes life interesting and fulfilling and uh, becomes a way of life. And, you yes. know, creativity leads to creations and creations, I think, bring power. Um, in my particular you know, line of work, um, when I create something beautiful, mainly for women, um, and, and they wear it, it brings them a sense of confidence, and they, I believe they stand taller, and they're more ready to face the world, and they exude that confidence outwardly to the world, right. and so really that creativity does transfer to power, and in this world, I think you have to think differently. You have to think creatively to succeed. Um, and in the industry of jewelry, you always have to bring a fresh perspective and something different because that's what the consumer demands. And so creativity is almost uh, inevitable. You must right. be. Um, and for me, it doesn't really feel like a pressure. It's it's really just a passion of mine. Yeah. And it, and it comes naturally and it's, it's really very enjoyable. So creativity, you know, I think colors our life and it's part of everything that I, I think I do or would like to do. So it's a very important, it's a important part of life. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It was so nice talking to you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you so much, Fauna, for of coming course. on and blessing my set with your beauty and knowledge and all of that. I certainly... Well, likewise. I mean, Thank you. you talk about the right and the left brain, and I mean, you're no, you're no different in that category. Oh, thank so you. Thank congratulations you. Congratulations to you as well. Thank you, ma'am. Best of luck in all your creative endeavors. You. Please stay with us. You're watching The Maria Cosette Show. Every year, nearly 2 million Americans are diagnosed with cancer. And aside from the inherent hardships that the patient experiences, their family and loved ones are greatly impacted. Walk with Sally is a nonprofit organization with the mission to provide hope through individualized mentoring and community support services to empower children experiencing trauma due to a loved one with cancer. The organization essentially pairs a mentor with a child, both having been impacted by cancer in some regard. Through multiple programs, including mentorship, temporary family support, art healing, and friendship activities, Walk With Sally gives hope when all else seems hopeless. Their biggest fundraising event is White Night, White Light, held annually in the South Bay area of Los Angeles. As guests gather on a summer night dressed in all white, inspirational stories are shared and hundreds of thousands are raised, in addition to spreading awareness and enrolling new mentors. To find out more about this incredible organization, visit walkwithsally.org. Jane Goodall was an English primatologist and anthropologist. She is best known for her 55-year study of chimpanzees, a lifelong dedication to uncovering the social and familial interactions of one of the most fascinating species on Earth. At the age of five, instead of a teddy bear, her father gifted Goodall a stuffed chimpanzee, and she stated later in life that her fondness for animals began with this gift. In 1962, Goodall obtained a PhD, becoming the eighth person ever to be allowed to study a doctorate without having a bachelor's degree. 
She was unique in her approach. While others who studied wild animals would number their subjects, Goodall would give them names. She proposed that every animal had a unique personality, which was an unconventional idea at the time. One of Goodall's most revolutionary findings presented that chimpanzees actually created and built tools. Additionally, findings defined chimp behavior and how they were comparable to humans. She is known as the only human ever to be accepted into chimpanzee society. An interesting quote from Goodall states, Every individual matters. Every individual has a role to play. Every individual makes a difference. That's a wrap for the Maria Cosette Show. Thank you so much for tuning in. To find out more about the show, visit mariacosette.com slash television. For any inquiries, you can email us info at mariacosette.com. Much love to my guest today, Vanna Kitsinian, a powerful attorney, community activist, and of course, a very successful jewelry designer and entrepreneur. To get any of her beautiful pieces, visit jtv.com or vannakay.com. See you all next time. Stay creative. Peace.